You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dalby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dalby Podcast. Welcome to Wednesday. My name is Brock. I'm Dalby. All right, so it's official. It looks like we've got the Leafs and the Bruins once again in the playoffs here. That's so exciting that you're going to be with me and the rest of the Red Wings fans on the outside of the playoffs soon. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> You guys didn't make it, all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are like the kids that didn't graduate high school, all right? right? And you're the kid that's still got to go back to do some upgrading because you're still going to be on no, the no, no, sidelines. No, no. We're going to be the kids that went to college for a few weeks and then bailed after we got the freshman 15. How many times did Toronto beat Boston in the season this year? I have no idea. Oh, it was zero. Sorry, I didn't know if you knew that or not. What about uh, <laughs> how many p- consecutive playoff <laughs> series has it been? You always talk about old stuff. That's the problem with you. You're always, That's the problem with your generation. You guys are always reminiscing. <laughs> of, yeah, your you're old ass generation. You guys are always like, back in my day, oh, this used to happen. Oh, things aren't the way they used to be. But you know what else you can say about my generation? They also haven't seen a Leaf Stanley Cup. <laughs> You need to look forward. It's it's a new world. All right. I think game one's supposed to be on Saturday in Boston. Oh, so dude, this is a quick start. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. My dad's a diehard Bruins fan, so I get the shit talk from all angles. I yeah. get it from people that listen to the show and my old man. He does not shut up about it. Well, you know me. This is the eighth year in a row Detroit hasn't made the playoffs, so I'm going to watch till Toronto gets eliminated, and then I'll be done, too. Dude, last year when the Leafs <laughs> finally got past in the first round there, I had never been so excited. I don't even know what I'd be like if the Leafs won the cup. Honestly, you probably wouldn't show up for work. I oh, know that. I'd probably cry. <laughs> I, I legit would probably cry. I'd probably cry harder than I would if they lost. But like, no one would know because there's no way you watch any Stanley Cup final games with another human being. Depending on the next uh, how the next two weeks go, my therapy meetings are going to be very interesting. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. When the moon hits your eyes, if you haven't heard, uh, Tim Hortons has officially launched their pizza across the country. No offense to Tim Hortons, but who asked for this? Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, apparently, they've gone through with the launch because they were testing it out for about a year. I know in Ottawa, there was some Tim Hortons locations you could go to for a bit and had them. That's right. Um, they have gone through with the launch to quote unquote stretch the brand yeah. for afternoon and evening customers and uh, yeah like I, I don't know if anyone was really dying for uh, Timmy Ho's pizza. Like. Uh, the only thing I can think of is that I mean what is it roughly six times a year there's this like social media outcry for McDonald's to bring back the Mick pizza that actually sucked if you don't look at <sighs> it, wasn't it with nostalgia. It that good. It's just a nostalgia overload. But everybody calls for it and, I, and they never do it and I'm wondering if Tim Hortons was just like well we'll do it. Now Here's my thing. Yeah. I can barely get a properly toasted bagel at Tim Hortons. <laughs> I can only imagine how great this pizza is going to turn out to be. Yo, not only that, it's already tough if, like, the person in front of you is ordering, like, one of their sandwiches or something like that. Yeah. Imagine you're trying to whip through the Tim Hortons drive through and Buddy ordered a pizza. Either... It's going to be ready super fast because it's not actually that good. Oh, yeah. Or you're going to be there for 15 minutes. And they're supposed to be like flatbread pizzas, so I'm assuming they're going to be frozen. I guess. I guess, or microwaved. Right. It, there's no way they're tossing dough back there. <laughs> Just some dude in the back of the Tim Hortons spinning pies. That would be hilarious. Oh, sorry. We're short on donuts because we're making pizzas right now. <laughs> Big pizza day today. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I will say I'm going to try one because I feel like we all have the same idea right now. Yeah. Dude, the drive through is going to be insane. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be so bad, and, and it is only a matter of time before you go to the Tim Hortons and you order the pizza. Oh, sorry, machine's not working. Pizza machine's broken. <laughs> pizza machine's down. Pizza machine's down, dude. Is it just the same thing they put the bagels through? Like that toy just... <laughs> It just flops down into the toaster and out the other side, barely singed at all. I just feel like, you know, there's the rule, like, you should never get sushi from a gas station. Yeah. I feel like you should never get your pizza from a coffee place. I feel like that's a fair rule to live by. Yeah. I don't think you'll miss out on much in life. So now, if Tim Hortons wants to send us a free pizza... 
We'll try it. Oh, I'm going to try it. You got to try it. You can't knock it till you try it. Sure. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. So we're kind of ripping the idea that Tim Hortons now has pizza, but there are a few people saying that they have tried it, and uh, we've got someone on the phone. Was it you were in Ottawa when they were testing it out? Is that what it was? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I was working up on the uh, L, um, LRT up there in Ottawa, oh. and uh, it wasn't actually too bad. How was the pizza, would you say? Uh, I would probably rate it a 7 or 8 out of 10. It wasn't really that bad. Really? What? 7 or yeah. 8 out of 10 is more than not bad, my friend. Yeah, no, you're right. It isn't. And, and they were fairly quick in the store, too. But I don't know if you're going through the drive through to get pizza, though. Fair enough, man. Someone else texted in and said if you use the sauce for the farmer's wrap, it's really good dip. Really? It's just Chipotle, isn't it? Oh, that? Okay. That actually just changed my mind because now Tim Hortons has a chance to knock off Bandera bread. Like, I don't think Tim Hortons goes after, like, a big pizza pizzeria kind of thing. But with the farmer's wrap dip versus what you get with the Bandera nice. bread, I mm, you have my attention. That'd be really nice. You have my attention. Uh, even you could do, like, dessert pizzas, thinking about it oh. now. If they took, like, a little uh, bit of, like, blueberry fritter sauce or something sure. like that, put it on there, the jelly from the strawberry filled and stuff. A little a little of the Boston cream cream on top. Yeah. Like a chocolate base. Oh, man, that sounds so good. Dude, bring back the walnut crunch, but in pizza form. Ooh. That'd be so money. Are these just beaver tails? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, Can we just make beaver tails? That's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> they're, uh, they're Timmy tails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Timmy, Timmy tails. Also, Timmy tails just kind of sounds like tragic stories from former Tim Hortons workers who have PTSD. Timmy tails is what you hear from the old dudes on Coffee Row at about 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> I can't wait for the whole pizza thing to flop and they start doing this. This is going to be awesome. Timmy I'm- tails. Timmy tails. Timmy tails. <laughs> Timmy Tills. I wonder if you can go and like custom order it, like how you can make a McDouble a Big Mac or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold up the drive through lineup even longer. Give me the fritters all right now. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Podcast. What marketing genius brought home pizza for their family and was sitting at the table debating on whether to grab that second or third slice and then thought, I could really go for a double-double right now. Because I have (laughs) never paired coffee with pizza. What pizza topping pairs best with bitter black coffee? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think in Italy they drink espresso and eat their pizza? Oh, for sure they do. Yeah, then it might not be too far-fetched, then. But espresso is a far cry from what they serve in those cups of dim. Hey, they, they drink espresso in Italy. We drink triple-triples there. <laughs> <laughs> like you see somebody getting a tray of four coffees with a flatbread pizza on top, and you are legally entitled to shoot that person. Oh, <laughs> You might want to because they're going to shit themselves for sure, dude. (laughs) Give me a Hawaiian pizza, a double-double, and a roll of toilet paper. Thank you. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. If you've spent literally any time in school, you've learned some Shakespeare over the years. But there's this interesting trend that seems to come and go from social media every couple years comparing Shakespeare to Southern accents. Okay. The idea being that, like, the way that Shakespeare wrote his plays, if he was American in modern times, he probably would have had a bit of a Southern accent. I guess, though, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And if you can't picture that in your head, here's a clip from a TikTok video that's part of this sort of viral trend right now. What's in a name? (laughs) That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So, Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain (laughs) that their perfection to which he owes without that title. I mean, it does sound pretty epic. It just sounds like Southern jargon, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, sometimes I, I get lost when I'm trying to watch Shakespearean stuff because the the old English and the accents and stuff like it's that. It's gibberish. It does feel a little bit, but you put it into this Southern accent, and all of a sudden I just feel like I'm watching Forrest Gump. Shakespeare would have 100% said y'all. <laughs> Absolutely he would have. But it gave me the idea what would Shakespeare have sounded like if he was a Canadian bud? 
Oh, like, you know what oh, I for mean? sure kind of guy. If Shakespeare wrote plays for hosers, what would it sound <laughs> like? You know, like, <laughs> like all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. That's amazing, dude. <laughs> players extra even. <laughs> What's the, uh, let me look up the to be or not to be line here. Oh, yes. Is that Romeo and Juliet? I think so. Is that, oh, Hamlet. Hamlet. That's, that's what it, it is. That, I'm not good at Shakespeare. <laughs> hey, let me. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. I got to get in character. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of trouble, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache. And the thousand natural shocks. <laughs> that flesh is hair, too. <laughs> Tis a consummation. Devoutly to be wished. To die. <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> and then Shakespeare hops into his <laughs> F-250 and drives away <laughs> down the white mud highway in Alberta. <laughs> to for sure or not for sure, bud. Uh, parting <laughs> such sweet sorrow, bud. So for now, I guess I'll just say take her easy. <laughs> Dude, Shakespearean bud is, is something that needs to happen. <laughs> this, this is the Brock and Delby podcast. We were talking about this kid who's playing NCAA video games, esports, <laughs> if you want to call it. And uh, he's got suspended for the rest of the season, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, for swearing. For, for typing out cuss words in the chat logs. Which I didn't even think about it while we were talking. We got a text in here from Torben at 762 He said, that's ridiculous. Like, the PGA doesn't even kick players out for swearing. You couldn't. Honestly, you could imagine golf and not being allowed to swear. I wouldn't play. Like, I get... Maybe not shouting 3825 so loud the birds fly away, you know, like in the shows. Sometimes you need to, though. Sometimes you just got to let it out. If you're going to play another 13 holes, you just got to have that therapy moment. Uh, we do got someone on the phone. Uh, what's the place you think you should be allowed to swear? Poker. World Poker Tour. I, I've always been shocked when you watch poker on TV <laughs> that those guys can lose like a million dollar pot and just go... Damn. Are they not allowed to swear? Is that like a rule? I don't, I don't know if they're not allowed to swear, but they just don't, which makes me... Well, they don't. They've been told that they can't. I don't know, man. I feel like every time I've been at the casino and lost like 20 bucks, I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're playing with yeah. a different bankroll than they are, brother. Yeah, I want the realistic <laughs> casino experience. I want a guy freaking out at the dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, at the casino, they swear at the tables. The World Poker Tournament should have a guy sitting there with his wife, just nervous, standing behind him. <laughs> Make it more real, dude. Hold up a sign. He, he goes to push all in. She's like, honey, the kids need medicine. <laughs> <laughs> that would make watching poker at 2 a.m. way more interesting. 100%. Now, you've got me curious. So I just typed in uh, World Poker Tour swearing. And apparently there is, or at least was, an F-bomb rule where if you swear at the table... You can be forced to sit out for a number of hands. Really? Which, like, in those tournaments, that's big because your money still goes into the pot for, like, the ante and stuff like that. But you're not allowed to play. Like, you get insta-folded. That's insane, man. I mean, you're literally watching millions of dollars disappear in front of you and you can't drop one, three, eight, two, five. And that's the thing. It's like, now you're forcing these these players... Because they're still going to feel those emotions. You can't be like, hey, no swearing. And they'll be like, oh, okay, I guess I just won't stress out. But now they've got to drop like the, mm, gosh darn it. I, I think we should just start having like quotas on how much we can swear in a day. Because mm. even I, I think a lot of people agree with me at work. Yeah. Sometimes you just, it, you, you just need to do it, man. It helps 100%. you blow off some steam. I think... Uh, what do, you, what do you think's the over-under of, like, F-bombs you need in a day? I'd say, it, like, 12, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> at least tw at least 12, dude. I think it depends on the job, right? Like, I think if you're, like, working outside, you're doing, like, hard labor, 12 for sure. Mm. I think if you're, like, an accountant in an office, you, like, four? Mm. Four or five? You know what I mean? How often do you work with the copier? 
I think that should play into it. I think if you're working with any sort of technology or people in general, I think 12 is like actually a pretty good number, dude. And I, I feel like it could be a, it could be like a crappy phone app where it's like you get a certain a lot amount of stuff that you can do. Yeah. And if you want to get more, you have to buy credits for. It. <laughs> they take it off your paycheck. <laughs> Farmer Pete texted it seven six two triple five. Said, "What about one per hour?" Right, if you're working a nine to five, you get eight solid three eight two fives in a day. Yeah, I like I that. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think you could ration yourself. And imagine if you had like a spell of like four or five hours where work was actually going smooth. How you could just rattle them off at the end of the day? That'd be nice. And then I think I think everybody gets one money in the bank C bomb to drop. <laughs> <laughs> you get to cash that one in, but you only get to cash it in like once a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Once, once, a, once a fiscal quarter, yeah. you can hit a C sharp if the if the if the occasion calls. Employee for it. of the month gets the money in the bank C bomb. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. These are the things we need to start implementing in society, and I think we'll be better for it, man. He gets you. If you're employee of the month, you get one a day until the next employee of the month. I would wield that power like a madman. The Brock and Dolby, Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Random question. Sure. Have you ever heard of the USAA? The USAA. Uh, I mean, uh, you, you say AA, and I assume American Airlines or Alcoholics Anonymous, <laughs> but I feel like that's not where we're going. Yeah, no, it's not that. Okay. It is the United States Air Hockey Association. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I've been seeing these videos Come online. On. Professional air hockey is now a thing. Really? I mean, they're doing live streams online. I, I hey, you got professional darts, you've got professional pool. Why the hell not, right? Is is there a pro level of air hockey though? Can I don't you know. show me? Yeah, here, watch this video. These guys are fired up. <laughs> Come on! There's like six people in the crowd watching. Hey, that's more than I've seen come out for some local hockey teams in my life. I do find it funny because it looks like it's like one of their dads is refereeing sitting in the middle. There. You know what I appreciate? There is no discernible difference in talent between that and the last time I was in an arcade. Oh, dude, it, it looks no different than when we played in our friends' basements, honestly. They're yeah. just flailing their arms at one another, but somehow there's something on the line now. I will say one guy has the... Uh, the one finger technique and the other mm. dude's doing the palm the on claw. the top. Yeah, He's got yeah. the claw. That's just yeah. more control. It is I interesting mean, to see the technique. The there. one finger, you can get more snap, but at the same time, you know, you got to play the angles. It, it's super stupid, but I do find it funny how, like, games are kind of becoming, like, serious sports now. Dude, look at how big wiffle ball has gotten online. That stuff's crazy. I've seen videos of that. The the pitches those guys throw. Honestly. Like, the they, stadiums they've got. This like, is something that we used to play in our backyards because because we couldn't be trusted with real bats and balls around our household windows. And these guys have taken it and built it to not only a sport, they've evolved the skill, and it's something that people are actively seeking out to watch. It's crazy. I just don't know why we don't have a Major League Jenga. <laughs> that would be so sick, would it not? That would be perfect uh, if they did it in the winter. It would give golf play-by-play guys something to do in the off season. Oh, you'd have to have a real gentle delivery if you're doing play-by-play for. He's going in. He's going to about the fourth row. Oh my god, he's going for a middle piece. He's going for a middle piece. He's he's shaking. He's he's done it. He's done it. <laughs> As it tips over, off! <laughs> Either Jenga or Twister would be absolutely gnarly as the Major sp- League Twister? Yeah. Oh, the National some- Twister Association? Bro, there'd be some dirty play in professional oh, Twister. Absolutely. Guys just throwing elbows, ladies kicking at each other, like, oh, left hand, your face. <laughs> Yo, dude, there could actually be penalties and stuff. You know what I would watch? Give me some Major League. What is it? Uh, where you. Slaps. Oh, that weird hit. hand slap game where you put your hands under someone else's? Yeah, and, and if they flinch, over. you get a free shot. But if you miss, then you have to be slapped. It's like, oh, let me see that on a pro level. I'm a pro flincher, dude. Dude, never mind that. What's that Dana White power slap where they're hitting each other in the face? That makes me uncomfortable. Hitting each other in the hands? I'm glued to the TV. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Someone texted in at 762555 saying that there should be a professional mini sticks league. Yo. That would be sick. You know what, though? I think there's got to be an age limit. 
and I think it's a cap. I don't want to see two 40-year-old dudes play. No, I absolutely want to see two 40-year-old dudes. <laughs> the The arena is just a hallway in a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not in an actual hotel for insurance purposes, but it, the set has been decked out. No, 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 no. It's at the Holiday Inn. It's- that's... <laughs> That's where it is. You know how, like, old UFC fights, they'd be like, live from the Palms Casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what, live from the Ramada. From the Motel 6. <laughs> and you just have a bunch of grown men playing mini sticks. I mean, there's already professional ball hockey, so true. Just take them down to their knees. You Absolutely. Know? You know, someone, actually, a bunch of people said this, and I feel like there was a time in my life as a younger man I could have gone pro in Red Rover. Oh, dude, I was dude. a beast at Red Rover back in the day. I would watch the hell out of that. Just grow, and you could do it like all those college football players that don't get drafted into the NFL, <laughs> like ex pro wrestlers and stuff. Just big jack dudes, all locked arm in arm. <laughs> It'd be like the North American version of the running of the Bulls, basically, you know? <laughs> Dude, even you say the, like, washed-up NFL players, what if we had a kill-the-carrier league? Oh, God. You could just call it, like, the CTE league or yeah. something? <laughs> Bunch of dudes just running around tackling each other. That would be amazing. If you sign a contract to join that league, you failed the concussion protocol. That's the XFL. <laughs> That's the real extreme football league right there. A uh, few people texting in saying a, a red ass make that professional. Yeah, yeah. Full contact. King of the Hill, somebody said. Oh, King of the Hill would be awesome. Just watching a guy like plant his flag at the top of the hill and people just trucking up to try and take him down. <laughs> Seeing a grown man cry as he gets thrown down, hitting the ice. Ryan Gosling could finally get his revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Only the real ones know about that. Uh, Bloody Knuckles is Yo. So, something someone texted me. I don't know if I could watch that one. I've seen people play that in high school, and it made me queasy. Never mind watching dudes do it on professional high-def TV. It's like Attitude Era Wrestling, where they had to put the warning about the fake blo- or the, the, the blood and stuff. Please do not try this at school, it would say. <laughs> you know, some people are saying pro tag that is a thing tag's been a sport for a while now. this is how we know some of you are not staying up past 11 o'clock watching sports net because <laughs> pro tag is out there it's absolutely wild stuff man i mean they're just basically parkour guys running around flying around and when they wipe out when they go for like big dives and stuff like that which it's funny because even parkour is just basically like that one kid that couldn't sit still right he would just yeah the recess would let out and he would just attack the monkey bars and the climbing structures and you were just like, man, that kid's messed up. Now he's a professional tag player. Dude, just because you said the monkey bars and stuff, professional grounders. Ooh. Right? Especially like you put some money into it, set like a set design, and you could redesign it every season yeah. for new obstacles, new game. Wait, is that essentially not just that Netflix show, Floor is Lava? That's kind of what it is. I guess. <laughs> Damn, they beat us to it already. You know what, though? Theirs is lava. Ours is a playground. Ours is cooler. Ours is shutting down a park and kids can't play. Just grown <laughs> men are playing grounders. That's our audience. It's just sad kids who wanted to come to the park. No, that was last May long weekend when me and my buddies got <laughs> drunk and went to the park. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Podcast. When you go camping, are you a tech camper or are you a no tech camper and i asked this question are you plugged or unplugged exactly are you are you acoustic camping or are you plugged in <laughs> I, I asked this question because i'm starting to see articles obviously we're what about a month away from camping season in yeah, ontario May 19th yeah and we're starting to see articles and news things about getting ready for camping season and all that and i saw one yesterday and it was 17 things you'll want to bring with you when you go camping And I was like, man, a lot of stuff on this list is electronics based. What do they got? There's ties for your like your cords, your cables to keep them like neat and organized. There's uh, your Kindle so you can read books on your camping trip. Not actual books, but on the digital like the book reader thing. There is a uh, a travel steamer which you can plug in (laughs) and it basically keeps your clothes from getting wrinkled. All kinds of power banks for your phones and tablets and laptops. This sounds more 
more like glamping kind of stuff, right? But, and that's just it. And don't get me wrong, because I'm reading this and I'm like, yes, I would. I, I don't know about the clothes steamer, but I'm like, I would like all of these things when I go camping. But I also know I've been yelled at for using the word camping. Well, what's your definition of camping? Because my idea of camping mm. is going out yeah. and setting up a tent, sleeping on the ground, waking up, feeling the root in your nipple, <laughs> waking up way too early. Why is it in your nipple? <laughs> <laughs> having a case of water that you drank way too fast. Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's just supposed to last us the whole weekend. That's my idea of camping. I, I agree with you. I think when you're talking about camping, I think anything else has modifiers, right? Like if you've got an RV or a camper, I think that's a different thing. If you're going to a cottage or a cabin or whatever, mm. I think that's a different thing. I think raw camping is campground campsite tent. Raw camping is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> I'm going in raw this weekend. Raw acoustic We're going out camping. to Algonquin. We're going in raw. But I also know like a lot of campsites and stuff like that, they they do, or, or they're starting to have electricity options. Mm. I know when my folks go camping, they uh, often are looking for places that have Wi-Fi. Most so of those KOA places have those now. It's yeah. all decked yeah. out like that, and I don't, I don't have a problem with it. To me, that's what's going to get me to actually go camping. Uh, I'll say the biggest electronic that I think you do need to bring camping mm. is a Bluetooth speaker. That Honestly, yeah, 100%. I, I think that's honestly the number one electronic that you need to have because sometimes the sounds of nature, yeah. they just start leaving your head a little empty. <laughs> you start thinking, <laughs> listening to the crackle of the fire. Listening to your own thoughts in the forest is a very scary place. Yeah. And some, pl- plus, sometimes you need the Bluetooth speaker to shut the dude up with the guitar. That, well, that's just, hey, hey, no, I know you just learned Wonderwall in a YouTube tutorial, but we've already got music. Thank I've, you very I've much. I've got Wonderwall on Spotify if we want to listen to it. <laughs> we, yeah. can, we can play the original. That'll be great. Yeah. I, think, I think that's probably the most important thing, but also... I feel like I I get itchy without my phone. Mm. I get itchy without my phone, so I need my phone, and I probably need some sort of like power booster because I might not be able to plug it in. Yeah, unless I have I bring the electricity with me. Well, the idea of not bringing your phone camping in this day and age is crazy. I mean, I think we've all seen that James Franco movie, 127 Hours, where he gets True. stuck between the rock. But I also, though, <laughs> like if you're going at like a local campground and you're taking your phone and you're telling people it's because you watched 127 hours like yeah i feel like you're have you an spent excuse. a weekend with your family that's <laughs> that's like being that's worse than james franco being make, stuck between the rock dude make you want to gnaw your arm off yeah away from yeah <laughs> you know your folks listen to the podcast right i'm well aware i think everyone can agree with me sometimes you'd rather gnaw your own arm off than hang out with your own family dude <laughs> This this is the Brock and Delby podcast. Ed's word of the day. Let's see what he's got. Good morning. Uh, Today's word, it's uh, fungible. Yeah, fungible. F-U-N-G-I-B-L-E. Fungible. And it's interchangeable or flexible. Well, I guarantee you I'm not as fungible as I once was. Oh, well. Anyways, have a great one. Cheers her up. I think a lot of people are realizing that they're not fungible as well as they're filing their taxes right would, now. Would you say that they're non-fungible? Mm. Would you say that they're non-fungible tokens? <laughs> That's what <laughs> NFTs are. That's basically it. <laughs> Today's word of the day is the opposite of an NFT. Uh, I think you can use <laughs> fungible in many different ways. Uh, you've got one beer in the fridge. Mm. You're hanging out with your buddy. He says, mm. can I have it? You said, That's not fungible. I'm oh, sorry, man. That's just, it's not fungible. That's not like fungible. You. That said, that one guy who is always making mistakes at work that just makes life hard for everybody or maybe walks around, carries himself a little bigger than he is. But you got to know how fungible you are around. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll say this. I have considered having kids, mm. but it doesn't seem fungible for me. <laughs> It doesn't seem fun or fungible. Your, your bank account would never be the same. It would not be fungible if you had kids. Uh, if you're on the job site today and someone asks you for a dart, just say it's not fungible, dude. These are 20 bucks a pack right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm made of money? Can't go that way. I'm sorry, man. You're going to have to get your own darts. What do you think? These Paul Mall smooths by themselves? These are NFDs, non-fungible darts. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they got a little ape on the package. That's how you know that they're official. For more Brock and Dolby. Tune in weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by badshop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store.
with all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.